Today we're going to evaluate the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. And this question was suggested by a subscriber named Cookie Man. So thank you, Cookie Man, for this question. Okay, so try this on your own. I'll give you a hint. It's going to take some Calc 3 techniques to solve, so keep that in mind. Uh, or you can just watch me solve it. Okay, so let's call this integral i. I mean, I guess what's the first thing we should do is just see if we could find an antiderivative of e to the negative x squared, but it's not hard to see that that's, that's impossible. Okay, so we'll call this integral i, and now what we're going to do is we're going to look at i squared. So i squared is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx times, and now I'm going to use a different variable. I'm going to use y. So the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative y squared dy. Right? This is the same value as the original integral. So this is i squared. And using properties of double integrals, we could write this as one big double integral. So it's the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e. And now if e to the negative x squared times e to the negative y squared is e to the negative x squared minus y squared. And then just pick an order of integration. Let's go dy dx. It doesn't really matter what our order of integration is because the bounds are the same. OK, so believe it or not, this is going to make the question a little bit easier. Instead of using Cartesian coordinates, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to polar coordinates. So let's sketch the region that we're integrating over, and then we're going to express that in polar coordinates. OK, what's the region? Oh, let's call it D. Well, x goes from negative infinity to infinity, and y also goes from negative infinity to infinity. That's the whole plane. OK, so we're integrating over the whole xy plane. And how do we express this in polar coordinates? Well, it's a set of r and theta such that, well, what are the bounds for r? The smallest r could ever be is 0, and the biggest it could be is infinity. So r is bounded by 0 and infinity. And the smallest theta could be always is 0, you know, if we have the whole plane. And the biggest it could be is 2 pi. OK, so we're going to integrate over this polar region. So i squared is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to infinity. And I know we should be like taking limits as something goes to infinity, but you know, if you, if you were to type this up, you should do that. But just for the sake of completion, it's fine to leave it like this. OK, what's our function? e to the negative x squared minus y squared. Well, let me, we could rewrite this as e to the negative x squared plus y squared. x squared plus y squared is just r squared. So this is e to the negative r squared. And now since we're in polar coordinates, we have an additional integration factor of r dr d theta. OK, remember, dx dy is equal to r dr d theta uh, in polar coordinates. OK, now we'll start by integrating with respect to r. So i squared is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi. How do we integrate with respect to r? We'll just use u substitution. So um, we need a negative 2 here. So bring a negative 1 half in front. So this is uh, negative 1 half e to negative r squared, evaluated at 0 and infinity d theta. which is the integral from 0 to 2 pi. OK, let's keep this negative 1 half out front. When we evaluate at infinity, e to the negative infinity is 0 minus e to the negative 0 is 1. OK, so this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi of negative negative, positive 1 half d theta. OK, and now this is like super easy, right? So this is 1 half times 2 pi minus 0, which is equal to pi. So is that our answer? No, right? We just found 
i squared. So i is the square root of that answer. So let's write that out. So i, which is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx, is equal to the square root of pi. Pretty neat. And so when, when do you see this? This function here, e to the negative x squared, that's like the bell curve. So if you ever take statistics, if you, uh, if you plotted this, this is like the bell curve function. So the area under the bell curve um, is the square root of pi, which is why we have to scale it by a factor of 1 over root pi if we want it to be like a probability de density function. Okay, well thanks for watching and thank you Cookie Man for this great question. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, see you later.